Okay, my friends, hello, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katrina Kofed. I'm a non-diet nutritionist and a health coach, and I help people overcome years of stress eating, binge eating, emotional eating, really help you heal your relationship with food and find your way back to consistent and sustainable health habits free from diet culture. So in today's video, I wanna invite you to join me for a guided meditation with the intention of finding your calm, learning how to ground into your body and really being able to pull out this skill whenever your emotions overwhelm you, whenever you start to feel the urge to overeat come on, you can come back to this video and you can come back to the strategies and the tools that I'll be teaching you in today's video. So I want you to join me and I want us to be in a relaxed and calm seated position. You can also be laying down in bed if you want to be doing this. I'm sitting down on my sofa, but really I honestly prefer to do this meditation sitting on the ground. I really like sitting on the ground, crisscross applesauce, I find it to be very grounding. So you can sit on a chair if that's all you have available, but I don't recommend driving or being outside walking. I really want you to be seated in a calm um, and quiet environment where you can take 15 minutes for yourself and where you can close your eyes and feel safe and calm. So I'll give you a minute to find the space to do that. And then today we're really gonna be connecting with our bodies, okay? So I want you to start out by rolling out your neck and shoulders. And while we're doing that, I'll tell you about why this is so important. So I've worked now for going on four years with clients and I work with a lot of clients for overeating, stress eating, binge eating, emotional eating, one of the biggest triggers and one of the biggest issues we have with overeating is that we get so stuck in our brains we get so caught up in the triggers and the emotions that lead us to overeat um and the overwhelm and the exhaustion and the stress you know whatever it is that leads us to reach for food to soothe and give us that boost of dopamine all of this is happening in our brain okay and we forget that we have this body that we need to take care of too so really the intention behind stretching and just moving your body a little is to see how you're feeling. So how do these neck rolls feel? When was the last time you did this? Maybe you've been to a yoga class recently where you did this, or maybe it's been a long time. Maybe there's a lot of tension there. Feel free to bring your arms out together in front of you and do some stretching, continue stretching out your neck. Really whatever feels good here, I like to usually add some big arm circles if I have the space for it. Whatever stretching you feel your body needs right now, um, take the time to do that. And if you need to pause this video and come down to the floor and do a full on body stretch, I encourage you to do so and come back after that. So we're gonna continue with what feels good here. And then I want you to close your eyes and we're gonna do a body scan together. So I want you to take stock of how your neck and shoulders are feeling after we just did that. Is there any tension there? Is there any discomfort, any pain? Do they feel good? How are you feeling? Let's move down the arms. How are your arms feeling? Down to your forearms and your hands. You can even bring in some gentle stretching here with your forearms and your wrists, rolling out your wrists. How does that feel? Noticing these movements and sensations in our body, connecting back to our physical body, okay? This is called grounding into your body. This is one of the best ways to ground into your body and to become connected again with your physical body, which is really important, especially when we're working on overcoming any sort of overeating, emotional eating, binge eating, comfort eating, whatever it may be, okay? Eyes are closed, moving down to our chest, our collarbone, our back. How does your chest feel right now? If you experience anxiety, maybe there is some clenching, maybe there's some tightness in your chest. Moving down to your stomach, how does your stomach feel? Again, if you're experiencing emotions like overwhelm, stress, fatigue, again, anxiety, um, worry, all of those feelings, all of those really difficult emotions can manifest in our stomach, in our gut system. So there is an entire nervous system that surrounds our gut and our intestines called the enteric nervous system. And it communicates directly with our autonomic nervous system, which is in the brain. So you might've heard that 90% of our body serotonin is produced by the gut. And you know, they call the gut the second brain. It's because of this enteric nervous system, okay? So that's why we, 
when we feel anxious, when we feel stressed or worried, that's why we feel it in our stomach. So if you're feeling it there, and regardless of what you're feeling, I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths. <sighs> Open mouth, exhale, let's do that again. <sighs> How does that feel? When was the last time you took a deep breath like that? I wanna challenge you to do that every single day, just once or twice a day, you can do this any time of day. Moving down our body, moving to our hips, our behind. How does that feel? Any tension? any pain, discomfort, maybe there is, maybe there's not. Our hips can store a lot of emotion, so if you don't often stretch and you find that this is a place where there is some tension or you could use a stretch, then I would encourage you to incorporate that. Moving down our legs, our quads, our thighs, down to our calves, any muscle soreness or stiffness, again, noticing pain or tension. Finally, moving down to our feet. How are your feet feeling? Maybe again, there's some muscle soreness or some tight muscles there. Any pain or discomfort? When was the last time you gave yourself a foot massage? I am willing to bet that it has been a while. Our feet are under a lot of pressure every single day. They carry us through life on earth. And that is, you know, no pun intended, but it is no small feat. So our shoulders, our neck, and our feet really can build up a lot of muscular tension. So now that you've done your full body scan, how are you feeling in your body? This is a chance for you to take stock of how your body is feeling altogether. If there is more discomfort, if there is more tension, that's a sign, uh, um, that's information that your body is giving you that you need to do more of the stretching, need to do more of the self massage and taking care of your body to rest and recover. And this goes for all of us, regardless of whether or not we exercise a lot. If you're feeling this tension, we all need that self-care and we all need to be taking care of our physical bodies in that way. Now, a big part of the reason we started today's meditation with a body scan is because of what I talked about earlier, which is that we get so far removed from our bodies when we are caught up in all these negative emotions that lead us to overeat or binge eat. So I really want you to take away from this, this video today that every single time those emotions come up, you have the opportunity to go sit down for two minutes somewhere privately by yourself and take a few deep breaths, do some neck rolls, stretch out your body, see how your body is feeling, okay? I want you to think about what are the emotions that come up when you feel the urge to overeat? When are you most likely to find yourself reaching for food for comfort? Is it because you're bored? Is it because you have nothing else to do? Is it because you feel defeated or overwhelmed? Is it a way to procrastinate from doing other things? Is it when you've had a stressful day at work and eating at home and just snacking will really just help take off the edge? I want you to think about what's the situation that applies to you. And then I want you to think about whether or not you're connected with your body when that's happening. So you know that I think there's nothing wrong with enjoying food and there's nothing wrong with eating food for pleasure from time to time. And I want every single meal you eat to be satisfying and to taste good. But I think we can all agree that it doesn't feel good when we use food to soothe and when we end up overeating and we're just really going on that autopilot and just shoveling food down our throats. So this is really an opportunity for you to think about how do you wanna feel when you eat? How do you want your conscious eating pattern to look? What would that mean for you to be a more conscious eater? To me, it means planning nourishing and satisfying meals throughout the day. To me, it means living free from food rules and not letting guilt and shame around food make its way into my brain as I'm eating. To me, it means enjoying all my favorite foods on a regular basis, including things that I might have called junk food in the past. Things like pizza or donuts or cookies or chips, for example. So what does being a conscious eater mean to you? I want you to think about that. Let's take another deep breath together. Now I want you to visualize in your head, in your mind's eye, what would it be like if you came home 
and you are experiencing one of these negative emotions that usually leads you to reach for food to soothe. Maybe you had a stressful day at work. Maybe your kids are yelling and being annoying and they won't stop or they won't listen to you. Maybe you're not feeling heard by your partner. Maybe you're feeling really uncomfortable in your skin. Maybe you're feeling like you can't reach the goals you want, you know? I think one of the most difficult things about using food to soothe is that we're using it to put distance, put mental and emotional distance between ourselves and the difficult emotions we're feeling in the moment. And it feels like if we take the food away, then we have to face that feeling head on. And that can be really difficult. So what would it look like if instead of having to face that hard emotion head on, what would it look like if instead you came home and sat down by yourself and listened to this video? Or you sat down by yourself and took some deep breaths? Or maybe you need to express your energy, your built up energy in a more active way. Maybe you need to scream into a pillow. Maybe you need to go stomp your feet outside. A lot of the time we suppress anger, we suppress frustration because we see that as a negative response. And it certainly can be sometimes, but sometimes suppressing those feelings causes them to become more built up, more pent up. We know that when emotions build up in, in our minds, in our bodies, we often take it out on food or we sort of blow up at someone we care about in a conversation. But if you're watching this video, if you're listening to this, you more likely than not are using food to stuff down that emotion. So what would it look like if instead you were to more actively address it head on? This is what I call non-food coping tools. So if you're feeling something like sadness or apathy or loneliness, maybe journaling about it could be a good outlet for you. If you're feeling frustration or disappointment, maybe one of the more active anger release methods could be better for you. I want you to think about what are these tools, these activities that you can do next time you're feeling one of these emotions that so often is a trigger for our overeating. What would that look like? I want you to create a plan in your mind. I want you now to visualize what does it look like when you come home from work or whatever your situation is where you find yourself most likely to overeat. Instead of reaching for food, picture yourself going through with that other activity that you just came up with in your head. What does that look like? How does that feel different? Taking a deep breath in and an open mouth exhale. Now that you've done it once in your mind's eye, next time you feel that emotional trigger come up in whatever situation it is, I want you to think back to this moment. You have already practiced in your mind's eye going through with this alternative activity. Remembering that food will always be there. Food will always taste good. There's nothing wrong with enjoying food, but continuing to reach for food to soothe is not helping you in the long run or even the short term. It's not helping you feel how you want to feel. It's not helping you get where you want to get, okay? So this is my challenge for you is to come back to this moment and to this video and to think about how it felt to go through with an alternative activity instead. How proud of yourself do you feel for that? I bet it feels pretty good. I bet it feels good to know that you can take a different action instead of always using food to cope, okay? Another deep breath together. Let it go. <sighs> Feeling that emotional and mental weight fall off your shoulders coming back into your body, knowing that you possess the ability to make a change today, to make a change tomorrow. Just because you have had days, weeks, months, or even years of using food to cope does not mean that tomorrow has to look the same. It doesn't mean that this is gonna be the rest of your life. You have the ability to create a change and it just starts with getting back into your body and taking that one small step forward. That's my challenge and my reminder for you today. I encourage you to come back to this video and this audio anytime you need it. Would love to hear your thoughts and your feedback in the comments below. And if you'd like to see any other guided meditations and visualizations, let me know in the comments. For now, I wanna thank you for joining me on this journey. I am so proud of you for being here. The fact that you're listening to this 
means that you are open to changing your behaviors with food. And that says a lot. That's a huge deal in itself alone. So I applaud you. I'm grateful you're here and I will see you in the next video. Take care.